the atmospheric pressure can be measured in the unit of uh, ATM, mmHg or uh, PA. Okay, so these are the unit that uh, we usually use to measure. Okay, uh, atmospheric pressure. Okay, let's start with this ATM. ATM. Now this ATM is called the standard atmospheric pressure. This ATM. ATM. One ATM is called the standard atmospheric pressure at the sea level. Okay, and it's approximately uh, one hundred and one thousand pascal. One hundred and one thousand pascal or seven hundred and sixty millimeter mercury. Okay, millimeter mercury. So this is ATM, eh? this is ATM. Then uh, how about this uh, mm mercury? Okay, this is the the pressure equivalence to the pressure caused by the mercury. Okay, the pressure caused by the mercury. Yeah? For examples, eh? for examples, uh, if we have a container and this container contains mercury. Okay, this container contains mercury. And the container, the depth, let's say the depth is 760 mm. So the pressure at the bottoms, uh, the pressure at the bottoms of this container, the pressure is equal to 760 mm mercury. So that is the pressure caused by this uh, equivalence columns of mercury, mm mercury. So for, I'll give you another example. Okay? So let's say this is a container. It's a test tube. Uh, we have, okay, this is 2 cm, 2 cm, 2 cm. Eh? And let's say this is vacuum. Eh? Okay, it's not, it's not inside atmosphere. Okay, vacuum. What's the pressure at A in uh, mm mercury? What's the pressure at A in mm mercury? The pressure at A is equal to, okay, you see the depth. The depth is 2 cm, right? The depth is 2 cm. Eh? This is the surface, A is here, okay, it's 2 cm. So 2 cm is 20 mm, right? Okay, this is mercury, yeah? This liquid is mercury, yeah? Okay, so this is equal to 20 mm mercury. Uh, that's, that's what does it mean by this mm mercury. The pressure equivalence to uh, the columns of the mercury. Uh, then the pressure at B, so what's the pressure at B? The pressure at B is equal to 40 mm mercury, yeah? 40 mm mercury. Hg is mercury, yeah? and uh, the pressure at C equal to 60 mm mercury. 60 mm mercury. That is what does it mean by mm mercury? Okay. Then uh, Pascal, I think you know, right? It's a Newton per meter square. Okay. Mm. So these are the unit that we can use to measure atmospheric pressure. Uh, Pascal. Pascal is Newton per meter square. Let's see the characteristic of uh, atmospheric pressure. The very first thing that you need to know is uh, the atmospheric pressure changes according to the altitude. Eh? Now, what, is, what does it mean by altitude? Altitude is the height from the sea level. For example, um, if you stay in KL, uh, near to KL, there is a highland called Genting Highland. Um, let's say this is sea levels, okay? And uh, Genting Highland, let's say, uh, is... Um, 1,200 meter from the sea levels. So then we say this 1,200 meter is the altitudes of Genting Highlands. So altitude is the height from the sea level. Okay, altitude. Eh? And atmospheric pressure changes according to the altitude. Actually, it decreases with altitude. Eh? Okay, so the the pressure here, okay, and the pressure at Genting Highland. Eh? Okay, let me uh, uh, A and B. Let's say we have A and B. Okay. So which one has higher pressure? KL or Gunting Highland? A, A has higher pressure, okay? The higher the altitude, the lower the pressure. So atmospheric pressure changes accordingly to the altitude. Uh, the higher the altitude, the lower the, the pressure. So altitude is the height above sea level, and the greater the altitude, the lower the atmospheric pressure. That's the very first thing that you need to know. Eh? Okay, second. Uh, act equally in all directions. The atmospheric pressure acts on every object in the atmosphere. And it acts equally in all directions. For example, let's say 
you're standing here. So the pressures from the left, the pressures from the right, on top and below, the pressure is the same. So at same altitude, same altitude, uh, the pressure acts equally in all directions. Okay. So even though the, the difference may be just one or two meter, but uh, this the, the difference can be ignored, okay? Because sometimes you can argue that uh, the altitude here is higher than the altitude here. But uh, if the difference is one or two meters, uh, the difference of the atmospheric pressure can be ignored. So that's the second thing that you need to know. Okay, proof of existence of atmospheric pressure. Uh, just now we learned that there are three experiments, right? Crushing can experiments, water cover with cardboard does not flow out. Magdi Birch Hemisphere. Okay, let's look at the first one. Okay, crushing can experiments. So we did these experiments uh, first by heating uh, water in a can. Eh? Okay, so we have a can and then we heat the water until it boils. Okay, so after the water start boiling, we, we stop the this uh, Bunsen burner. Okay, we stop burning it or stop heating the water and then we close it. Okay, this is open. Eh? Okay, and then we close it. After we close it, we pour some cold water to this can, okay? The cold water to the can, and we found that the, the can crush, okay? The, the can crush, okay? The can crush is because uh, when we pour cold waters to the can, uh, so it will cool down the gas. It cool down the gas inside the, this can, and when the gas cool down, the pressure decreases. Eh? When the pressure inside the can decrease, the atmospheric pressure outside will be higher than the pressure inside, then it will press on the can and crush the can. The crush the can. So when a can filled with hot water is closed and is cooled down rapidly by pouring cold water on it, it will uh, crush instantly. This experiment proved that there is a huge atmospheric pressure exerts on everything on the surface of the earth. So the huge atmospheric pressure press on the can and cause the cans to crush. Okay, so that is the crushing can experiment. If you pour normal water, can it crush? Yes. Actually, the cold water actually is not it's just normal water. Water at the room temperature. Not necessarily it must be very, very cold, okay? Just pour those uh, water at room temperature, okay? It will crush. Okay, so this is another experiment. You fill water into a glass until it's full, okay, and then cover it with a cardboard, and then turn it over. You will find that the water won't flow out, okay. The water won't flow out. Uh, you see, water has weight. The cardboard also has weight, okay. So the weight is acting downwards. Huh? This is supposed to move the water down, but because around the glass huh, there is a huge atmospheric pressure, so this atmospheric pressure press on uh, this cardboard and support the weight of the water and therefore the water does not flow out. So this is because the force caused by the atmospheric pressure acts on the surface of the cardboard is greater than the weight of the water in the glass. Okay, this force must be greater than this. Huh? Okay, if the weight is higher than the atmospheric pressure, then it will fall down. Huh? And this experiment proved that atmospheric pressure is present on the surface of the earth. Okay, the third one is the MACD Birch Hemisphere. Now you need to know how to explain this. Uh, this may be asked in your exam. Eh? Okay, they will ask you why when you uh, turn the glass upside down and why the waters don't flow out. Yeah, you must know how to explain this. This is the experiments done in a place called MACD Birch. Uh, in a place called MACD Birch. That, that's why it's called the MACD Birch Hemisphere. Okay, MACD Birch is a place. Eh? It's the name of the place. So the experiment is like this. Uh, we have two hemispheres, okay? And then uh, we have this, uh, uh, this is a rubber, rubber, okay? Used as an airtight seal. So after we close this two hemisphere, okay? This hemisphere initially is separated. Uh, so we close it. After close it, uh, we use a vacuum pump uh, to pump out the gas, okay? We use a vacuum pump to pump out the gas. So after we use a vacuum pump to pump out the gas, so uh, inside these two hemispheres, uh, it becomes a vacuum. But outside there is a lot of gas, and this gas will exert a very strong pressure on, the, uh, on this uh, Magdi Birch hemisphere. This hemisphere is made of uh, steel, eh? steel. So it's, a very, it's, it's very strong and it, do, it does not crush. Eh? 
after we uh, pump out the gas uh, to make this become vacuum and if you try to pull this uh, two hemisphere to to separate it then uh, you will find that it's very very hard actually when this experiment is done in MACD Birch, uh, they use 10 horses at each side 10 horses at the left hand side and 10 horses at the right hand side to pull this hemisphere even with such huge force uh, this uh, hemisphere cannot be separated so this proves that there is a very very big very very high atmospheric pressure around this hemisphere so uh, the hemisphere cannot be separated even by a very great force this is because when the air is pumped out the pressure inside the hemisphere become very low okay inside here the, the pressure become very low and the atmospheric pressure exerts a strong force on the outer surface of the hemisphere holding the hemisphere tightly together if the force is uh, big enough still you can separate it okay and seconds uh, usually uh, you must have a hole you must have a hole that connects to the vacuum tube okay if you allow the gas to go in uh, uh, then you can separate it easily what's the use of this uh, MACD Birch hemisphere no use just for experiment just for the purpose of experiment just a design of experiments uh, okay so you want to separate it first the force must be uh, high enough or you uh, there's a hole okay you allow the gas to go in when you allow the gas to go in uh, then the pressure inside equal to the back pressure outside uh, then you can separate it easily okay unit used to measure atmospheric pressure the following are the unit used to measure atmospheric pressure okay pascal as i told you just now and then uh, standard atmospheric pressure atm that is the pressure at sea levels okay and then we use mm mercury okay this mm mercury is also called tor tor uh, 760 for example 760 mm mercury is called 760 tor what is pascal pascal is a uh, newton per meter square okay it's a si unit this is the si unit si unit of pressure we have discussed this in uh, lesson one understanding pressure okay so these are the unit that we use to measure atmospheric pressure okay atmospheric pressure okay sometimes we can use millibar but millibar is not important in SPM so let's continue with the unit use to measure atmospheric pressure one Pascal is one Newton per meter square this is a SI unit and uh, one ATM is the pressure at sea level is equal to 1001 and 325 Pascal one uh, mm mercury Okay, one mm mercury is uh, uh, one per six hundred sixty atm. Okay, atm is a uh, standard atmospheric pressure. Okay, and uh, roughly equal to the liquid pressure exerted by a uh, milliliters of uh, mercury. Some uh, in SPM usually we use cm mercury. Yeah? Okay, instead of mm mercury, but. Uh, usually okay usually scientists eh, they use mm mercury instead of cm mercury but in spm uh in most of the question they give you cm mercury okay actually it's more or less the same eh, okay because uh, this one just tell the length of the mercury the equivalence to uh, the pressure caused by the length of the mercury equivalent to the, the the pressure caused by the atmosphere in calculation mm or cm uh, usually they give you cm okay but anyway the calculation is the same okay you must uh, for, for the calculation you must change the meter uh, because uh, because calculation normally they want you to change the uh, mercury cm or m mercury to pascal pascal is in meter so you must change this to meter for calculations